so um, at this point, the um, the photo should appear when you view uh, when you view the, um, the when you view comics. Uh, but we haven't dealt too much with styling via CSS. So what we're going to do is um, write a little bit of CSS to make things look a little nicer. So let me just check something here. When we did show comic, when we did show comic, it. Um, it's too big. It pops out of the out of the dialog box. So with a little bit of CSS, we can rein it in. So If you recall, in the you can just look at this. You don't have to go to the index. But in the index, when we're displaying the comic, uh, PG sh view comic, um, right here. When we set this up uh, in uh, actually in pop view comics info, remember you click the little speech bubble. Uh, it pops up, it pops up, and it shows you all of these things. And here's how we're displaying the image. We have the seventh, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The seventh paragraph, P, E, Q, six, image. Attribute is empty. So then ATTR set it to the image. That's why we display the image. We put a class there before. Um, this is how we, we can then write some CSS to latch on to that element to then properly style it. So all we, have, all we have to really do is just write some CSS that targets that particular element. We haven't done any CSS really up to this point, so I think what we can do is the CSS to fix this image and uh, also to fix up the table a little bit. Uh, remember that I said that the table, right now it's only as big as what, what's inside of it. I want to change the table so that it stretches out and looks nicer on the screen the text is a little bit nicer. So uh, let's move over to work with a little bit with CSS. Go ahead and open your index CSS file in the CSS folder. So compared to at this point we've got 269 lines of HTML. And with CS, uh, JavaScript we've got 741 lines. Uh, right now when we look at 26 lines of, of CSS that to me that's funny you know we haven't done very much there uh, and this one is not going to get that big either eventually at the most I think we're gonna go at about a hundred lines of CSS so we've got like you know six times the JavaScript compared here so uh, the first thing that we'll do here is uh, we want to resize that image a bit and because it's got a class it's kind of straightforward so at the very end now, because we're in Java, uh, we're in CSS. Our comment is yet again a little bit different. Um, resize uh, the image uh, displayed when view more. So I believe we've mentioned this before, but just for um, quick refresher, I'm going to break the comment apart here. I'm going to put reminder. Reminder on uh, CSS selectors. We have tag, we have uh, ID, we have class, tag, any existing HTML code. So example, body and P and IMG, ID. Uh, a unique user-generated identifier can only be used once per um, once per file, not per file, uh, per project. 
And so examples there are uh, pound um, div show thing or pound p image top, right? Because it's got the pound sign. So pound signs we've used them before um, a lot in um, JavaScript class a unique user generated identifier can be used many times per project and the example here is dot uh, my image or dot that paragraph so this uh, if you've taken other classes in, in web design, this you should know this already. If if you haven't, well, this is all that we need to know at the most basic uh, for us. What we need to do at the moment. So, what we need to do then is we've got an image tag uh, in that pop view comics with a class. You can do this several ways. Um, to, this is the complexity of CSS in that how do we properly select something. So I'll show you a couple of ways that we could do this and these will be synonymous. And the reason you might choose one versus another is simplicity in the code, efficiency in the code, readability in the code, or you know in your mind it makes more sense than others. One way that we can um, make this change is simply directly to the class. Uh, it was called, um, what did I say it was called, image, image, it was so long ago, two minutes ago, what did I say it was called? The class of image, comic image, yep, okay, so, dot comic image curly braces so one way to uh, to try to target what we're what we're trying to actually let's keep it on the same line here uh, one way is like that the class well sometimes we need to be specific in that there is an element inside of another element that there's a child element inside of a parent element uh, so Technically, what we've got is a class uh, attached to an image in a paragraph. So another way to do this is when we've got an image, it's attached to a to this class that's synonymous. Now there is well, we've got a paragraph. And then there's an image which has a class attached. Well, three of these are pretty synonymous. Um, sometimes we need to do this complexity in the whole cascade of the, of the elements uh, that we're selecting here. There's a paragraph, and there's an image, and it's got a class. So let's style it. Here we're saying, OK, there's an image somewhere, and there's a class. So this image could be inside of a div, or it could be inside of some other sort of parent element. Here we've specified this image that we care about has got to be in a paragraph. This one up here is saying any element it doesn't even have to be an image. This div could have this class attached. This h1 could have this class attached. So in our case, there is really only thing in, only one thing in our whole project that has that class. But this is why we can have a lot of complexity and frustration in CSS because of the, the way elements are, are nested. And you can see it here. There's a class. It's attached to this image. It's in this paragraph. Technically, it's inside of this div which is inside of this article, which is inside of this section. So you can get even deeper, uh, you can get longer than in the definition of the selector about what do we mean. 
In our case, we can keep it very, very super simple and just use the class because we're only going to use classes attached to images. So I'm going to use the basic one. So I'm going to put the uh, comment around here. Other ways to do the same, sort of. So right here we're going to say select any element with this class attached. This one is select any image with this class attached. And this one is select an image inside a paragraph with this class attached. So this is the specificity. How specific are we? Um, this is going to matter a little bit more a little bit later once we start to customize our app a little bit more. Like I want to make um, the, the heading of a particular screen taller than a different screen. If all of my screens have a header tag, and I try to write a rule, a CSS rule that affects all header tags. Well, that's going to affect all header tags. I need to specify a certain header, so I might have to specify. OK, so this one would be pretty straightforward. We set ourselves up that we've got, uh, wherever we're going to show a comic image, we're going to use that class. So um, the first thing that we will do is we will set a width, the width of this image. Now we could set values here about like, you know, 512 pixels or whatever, but we're going to use percentages. This image will grow or shrink to be 100% of the container it's in. And at the moment, this is inside of a paragraph, which is inside of the pop-up. The pop-up has a certain size, which is automatic, based on the device. So whenever you click Show Info, the pop-up is a certain size, depending on the device. We're saying. Uh, stretch out or shrink down this image to fit 100% inside of that pop-up. For fun, we're also going to do box-shadow. We can add a drop shadow to the picture so that this sort of separates it from the background. Box-shadow creates drop shadows. And as we see here uh, in the Visual Studio pop-up, it says um, you know, this is this uh, box shadow code. Um, we have uh, various properties we can put in here. Uh, examples, you know, the color, offset. So we're going to make this pop, this uh, drop shadow that's going to be uh, 5 pixels, space 5 pixels, space 5 pixels, black. This is a shadow that's going to move over to the right, 5 pixels. It's going to be moved down, 5 pixels. It's going to be blurry, 5 pixels. And the color of it will be black. Obviously, we can write any colors that we want here, like gray. Or if we know uh, hexadecimal, you know whatever this color of hexadecimal is, FA2299, whatever color that is. Or we can write also RGB colors. So to keep it totally simple for the moment, black drop shadow. If I wanted to push the shadow more to the right, well, I increase this first value. This first value moves it over to the right. 
if I only want it pushed over a little bit to the right, one. So positive values will move it to the right. Um, well, I want to move the shadow to, to the left. What do, you, what do you think we do there? Negative values. So negative 15 would move this drop shadow to the left of the object. Here, positive values will move the drop shadow down. So if we wanted to move the drop shadow up, negative values, which sounds counterintuitive. If it's going to move up, that usually up is positive in the real world, but that just has to do with the, with the origin, the zero position of the object, and upwards is actually negative. Uh, so uh, this would move uh, the shadow to the left, 15, and then up, 52. So it's going to fall to the left of the object. And then blur. I'm going to put it back so I can have blur values as well. Uh, I don't think you can have negative blur v values. But uh, here, uh, this is a sharp drop shadow. The edges are very crisp of the shadow. Here is a little blurrier, and then you can go even more, like a very blurry drop shadow. And then, like, like I said, colors. We will also do here, for a little bit of fun, a little style border dash radius. This is a minute. Um, the example, uh, some examples here. So border radius, how uh, we can do like a curved edge, 25 pixels. Create a drop shadow. X offset, Y offset, blur value, color, border radius, rounded corners, all four sides, 25. Let's say uh, same, actually same four sides, different, not sides, corners, different corners. If instead you specify all four corners, you can have a different roundedness to each corner starting from the top right. So if I say 5px space 25px space 99px and 1px okay well that's I'm specifying the four corners of this picture right the picture is a rectangle or a square it's got four corners so here I'm saying the top right corner is going to be uh, five pixels a little bit of curve on the top right um, 25 pixels that's the bottom right 25 curve on the bottom right 99, that's the bottom left. A lot of curve on the bottom left. And then back to the top left, only one. So starting from the top right clockwise, we can specify each corner. I just kept it simple, all four sides, 25 pixels rounded. Go ahead and save it and run it. Go ahead and view the, the picture of the comic, and it should now not look cropped. A lot of you remarked, my, my photo looks cropped. Well, what was happening was we had never really specified a size to display it on screen. So it was kind of falling off the edge of the, of the, of the view, of the design. So now when we specify a, a width to our image, it should stay within the size of the pop-up. And then for fun, we added some extra little bit of styling. So I'm going to run this on the device and check out the result.
With a few people, I noticed that on their device, the default was the wrong orientation. So uh, there's actually a code we can add to fix that. I'll do that in a moment. OK, so I'm saving mine. Uh, I've got my table. I click to view. And there it is. So it's not popping off the edge anymore. It is 100% of the size of the container. Um, so that's what our CSS is, is doing right there. Instead of the picture looking cropped or popping off of the edge, now it fits. And then uh, also, uh, I've got this edge on the right, drop shadow, rounded corner. So instead of a square corner edges, uh, they're rounded. So that's what we've got there with box shadow border radius. Very last thing I'll do here, then we'll do uh, some lab time. Um, this table, right now, because it's got a very short title, it looks very small. At the very least, I want to end today with stretching out that table so that it looks like it actually takes up a good amount of space. Then we'll fine tune it. So, one more thing. Um, we'll get back here to the uh, to our CSS. Okay, so the way this is working is there's a table. There's a table uh, on line uh, 422. Let's do this. Let's go to your JavaScript first to do something here. Go back to your index.js. Let's go to line 421 or so where it says uh, you're, we're creating a table. We had temporarily put in a border of 1. But instead, I want to uh, style this through CSS. Without border 1, it would look n like nothing, literally. There would be no edges to the border, uh, to the table. There would be no, no, no table border. So with CSS, we're going to improve this. That means we don't need this anymore. So on your JavaScript, find line 421 or so where we've got the show comics table. Where we had table attribute of border one, remove that completely. So just leave your table, your table attribute, your table tag, I mean. OK, back to the CSS. We've got a table that we're going to style. The problem here is I don't have a dot. I don't have a pound sign. So this means this is a tag, any existing HTML code. So I'm about to style any table that exists in the project. And at the moment, I've only got one. But if I had more than one table, they would all be selected and targeted and styled in the following way. So if I meant only the table that uh, is in that pop-up, uh, I mean the table that's in the view comics screen, we have to uh, deal with it in a few different ways. Or we could deal it with it in a few different ways. We could attach an ID or a class so that we're targeting that element. 
but here's another way. That, uh, that table is already inside of a named element. That's already inside of pound div show comics table. Actually, let me just double check the spelling on that. Uh, view save comic. Yeah, here it is. In the HTML, we have a div placeholder. Remember how we had just placeholder text, and that dynamically updated itself. Now here I call the div show comics table. So that's what I'm saying here. There is a uniquely named element somewhere in the HTML uh, with an ID div show comics table space. There is a table tag. There is an element that is a tag of table, which is inside of this, um, this div. That space there is very important. There's a table inside of this div. That's another way we can target this without having to write a class or an ID attached to that table. Here we're saying there's one uniquely named element in our code and there's a table inside of it. So basically what we're doing here is select an element with the ID of div show comics table, then select uh, an element that is the tag table to style it. There's a table inside of a div. I guess to be completely um, obvious, we can say div pound div show comics table. Now it's very obvious here. There's some sort of div that has this ID. And inside of that div is a table. That's the table we mean. Not the table on this other screen or that other screen. There's only one table that exists in our whole project. It is inside of a div with an ID of that. Select an element, a div, with the ID Div show comics table and select or then find an element that is the tag table to style it. And just very simply to wrap up at the moment, background color, background dash color, any color you want. We've got all these colors to choose from. Uh, I'm going to go with Alice Blue. And then the width is 100%. We're going to style this a little bit more next time, um, but for the moment, regarding CSS, when we had that image up there, our JavaScript worked fine. If, if all of this worked, your JavaScript worked fine. You took a photo, you displayed the photo. But it looked terrible because it was the wrong size. It didn't fit inside the element. OK, well, CSS to the rescue. We wrote some CSS to resize that image, to give it a drop shadow, etc. The table. Our code to create the table look, worked fine, but the table didn't look that good. It still doesn't look that good. We sell more styling. Well, CSS to the rescue. The point of CSS is, is the design. The point of the JavaScript, the interactivity. The point of the HTML, the structure. Remember, we talked about the separation of concerns. Each language concerns a certain thing. So what concerns design is CSS, and that's we're going to write some CSS. But at the moment, if you save it and run it at this point, even in your browser, uh, you should start to see this difference, that now the table is stretched out to take up space on screen. The color of the background has, has changed. The borders are missing, but that's fine. We will do that next time to, uh, to create some borders via CSS. We still have JavaScript to do, but we're going to shift gears to a little bit of CSS uh, for the next uh, lecture. 
Let me run it on mine and see if uh, see how that looks. These are this is another example where you can change this stuff. If you don't like the amount of border radius, you can pick your own value. You know, even zero. If you don't want any border radius, remove that property or put zero. If you want um, more uh, a different background, a different drop shadow color, there's your option there. If you want the drop shadow moved around to different places, there's your options. This here about the um, the table. Uh, if you don't like these colors or the width and all of that, you can change all of that. And it doesn't it's not quite there yet, but it is there now, stretching out across the screen in a very very light Alice blue. Maybe not super readable. We're, we're going to further work on that. So uh, we'll end the lecture at this point. I'll put my code in the folder. Um, when we come back, we're going to start to do some more CSS styling. And hopefully by then they return the other tablets they borrowed so I can have more for you to borrow. Can I take the color off?